The aim of this video on differentiation is to explain how to use it, the procedure involved in differentiating, and how to understand some of the key phrases and words that appear in exam questions. Why and how differentiation works is more complicated and not something I'll be looking at here. So this is really just about application of the process and understanding what it gives you when you differentiate. So the actual process is not very complicated and becomes second nature once you've practiced it a bit. So what we do here, we start with a function y equals 3x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x minus 12 and we differentiate that function to find dy by dx which is also known as the gradient function. We do this by multiplying the index number of each term by the coefficient and then reducing the index number by 1. So this first term for example is 3 times 3 9 x and then we're reducing the power by 1 that's 9 x squared. 2 times 6 is 12 we've got a minus sign in between reduce the power that becomes x to the 1 x to the power of 1 is just the same as x so I don't need to bother writing the 1 there this plus 5x is plus 5x to the power of 1 without the 1 written so 1 times 5 is 5 plus 5 when I reduce the power that becomes x to the power of 0 which is the same as 1 so this is actually 5 times 1 which I just write as 5 the x disappears and this final term doesn't have any x in it at all and so this whole term just disappears altogether no writing minus 12 or anything at the end this is my completed gradient function dy by dx this will give me the gradient of any point at any point on this curve so we'll have a look at what that means by looking at gradient in general looking at the gradient of a straight line that gradient remains the same the whole way through the rate of change of y with respect to x stays the same the whole way through because it's a straight line with a curve obviously the gradient is going to be changing at every point on that curve if we look at a more complicated curve this is a cubic with its two turning points as you'd expect this green line here is showing the tangent to the cubic the tangent is the same as the gradient of the cubic at any point so as I move this dot along the line we can see that the gradient down here is very steep and positive and as I move closer to the turning point the gradient of the curve is decreasing becoming shallower when we actually get to the turning point the gradient of the curve is absolutely horizontal the gradient is zero at that point then it becomes a decreasing function and the gradient becomes negative and it remains negative until it reaches zero again at the turning point of the curve and again should be absolutely horizontal at that point gradient is zero and then the function starts to increase again and the gradient correspondingly gets steeper so when you differentiate you take the function which describes the red curve differentiate it and you will get a new function which will tell you the gradient at any point on the curve so if we look at this curve this curve has the equation y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 if we look at the gradient for example here where x is 1 at the point x is 1 reading x is 1 here that gradient is roughly 2 we can see from what's drawn on the green line here so we'll have a look at how that works with differentiation this was the equation for our curve so when I differentiate that dy by dx same process 3 times by 1 of x so 3x reduce the power plus 
2 times 2 is 4, x reduce the power to 1, minus 5, and the minus 6 disappears. This function can be used to find the gradient at any point on the curve. So we just had a look at when x equals 1, and we expect the gradient to be around 2, because that's what we've just seen. So when x equals 1, I put the value of 1 into this function here, 3 lots of 1 squared plus 4 lots of 1 minus 5 that is 3 plus 4 minus 5 so that equals 2 exactly what we expect is the gradient of 2 if instead I fed minus 1 into my gradient function I should get a much steeper and a negative gradient so we'll try that out and have a look at when x is minus 1 we've got 3 lots of minus 1 squared plus 4 lots of minus 1 minus 5 so that's 3 minus 4 minus 5 that gives us minus 6 overall that's the gradient and as expected it's negative and much steeper so that's our gradient of minus 6 there and we'll have a look, just one more example of what happens when the gradient to the gradient when the x value is 0. So we can feed in the value when x is 0, and we get when x is 0, we've got 3 lots of 0 plus 4 lots of 0 minus 5. That's minus 5 again, a negative gradient but not quite as steep as it was when x was minus 1, when it was minus 6. We can see that there. So the gradient did get steeper at x is minus 1. Now when it comes to exam questions on this, one of the biggest problems is the number of different terms that are used to give you the same instruction. So differentiate is a straightforward instruction, which means do the process that we just saw. There's also find the gradient function. So that means exactly the same as differentiate. It means find a new function by differentiating, which will give you the gradient at any point on the curve. You might also be told to find dy by dx. Again, this is exactly the same instruction. Or find f dash x. So this is finding, that would be when the function is given to you as f of x equals the function. f dash x is what's happened when you've differentiated. So this is the gradient function, f dash x. Or it might ask, find the rate of change of y with respect to x. That would be for a specific point on the graph. That's effectively asking you to find the gradient at a specific point on the graph. The rate of change of y with respect to x is just another way of saying gradient. So we'll look at this in the context of an exam question. The exam question says, here is a function, y equals 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 24x minus 11. Work out dy by dx. So this is effectively just saying differentiate. Then give your answer in the form dy by dx equals a times by x minus b squared, where a and b are integers. So the first thing I'm going to do here is write out my function so that I can differentiate just the line below it. One of the biggest causes of mistakes is from copying the wrong part of the page and while you're copying you make a silly error. So it's good for checking to write out the function, check that you've done that, no thought involved in this process, just making sure you've gotten it written out clearly. Now we differentiate, so dy by dx, and I'm going to do what we did before, 3 times 2 is 6x squared minus 2 times 12 is 24x plus 24. So that's my differentiated version. Give your answer in the form a times by x minus b squared. So I'm looking for an integer, a is an integer, an integer factor of this whole expression here, which uh, is easy enough to see, is 6. So I can write that equals 6x squared minus 4x plus 4. 
and then it's asked me to write this expression in the form x minus b squared so I'd have to factorize that uh, and it's actually x minus 2 squared you can see x minus 2 times x minus 2 is minus 4x in the middle minus 2 times minus 2 is the plus 4 at the end so that's just uh, getting used to factorizing I suppose you might want to do the step here where you write it as x minus 2 x minus 2 to factorize that expression here so this is the first part done then asks hence or otherwise work out the coordinates of the stationary point of the original curve it's the same curve as we had before the stationary point that means where the gradient is zero it's a turning point. It's where the tangent is horizontal, as we saw. So to go back to this one, we're looking for the turning point, the stationary point, when the gradient is zero, horizontal line. So we're looking for the point where this dy by dx, the gradient function, equals zero. So dy by dx equals 6x minus 2 squared. We're looking where it equals 0. So we now have this equation to solve. I'm going to first of all divide by 6. That gives us x minus 2 squared equals 0. And then square root it. And that gives us x minus 2 equals 0, which gives us x equals 2. So the gradient equals 0 when x equals 2 but it's asked me to find the coordinates so not just the x coordinate the y coordinate as well now thinking about this curve I've just found the x coordinate to find the y coordinate I'm going to have to substitute that x coordinate into the graph of the the equation of the original function the original curve so I go back to the original curve, this one here, and I put in my x value. So when x equals 2, y equals 2 times 2 cubed minus 12 times 2 squared plus 24 times 2 minus 11. So y equals, that's 2 cubed is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, 2 squared is 4, minus 48, 12 times 4 is 48, plus 48, 24 times 2, minus 11. Those are obviously going to cancel each other out. 16 minus 11, y equals 5. So that gives us the coordinates, stationary point, and therefore stationary point, is y x coordinate 2 y coordinate 5 explain how you know that this stationary point is a point of inflection point of inflection means that instead of the curve going like that the curve is just going like that the gradient is becoming zero it's becoming horizontal and then immediately the graph is increasing again with a point of inflection, this gradient, or this function is always increasing. The gradient is always positive until it hits zero, and then it becomes positive again. It never has a region where it becomes negative. So, I, in fact, I know this because I know that this is a point of inflection, partly because we've only got one solution. There's only one point when the gradient is zero, whereas this graph has two points when the gradient is zero. However, to demonstrate it more clearly, we know that we've got some graph where we've got a stationary point at 2, 5. If it is a point of inflection, then the gradient just below this and the gradient just above it should both be positive. It should be an increasing function all the way across. I suppose it could be a decreasing function and then they'd both have to be negative. but to prove it let's just choose where x equals 1 and where x equals 3 
two points just either side of the stationary point that we've just found. So I can say when x equals 1, gradient equals, and I can use my dy by dx from up above, my gradient function 6x minus 2 squared, 6, 1 minus 2 squared, which equals, so minus 1 squared is 1 equals 6, which is positive. And then I can have a look at when x equals 3, gradient equals 6 lots of 3 minus 2 squared. Again, that's 1 squared, which is 1. So that equals 6, also positive. Therefore, the function is always increasing. So it's a point of inflection. Uh, and that's answered and demonstrated your understanding of the curve and how it works. So that's the end of that question. And in fact, the end of the video. I'll carry on doing some more example questions in other videos. But that's the end of this one.